we all know that the Christian churches have dedicated a special time for us to celebrate with our creation. Yes, indeed, Christians around the world are invited to join in the season of creation which runs from 1st of September until 4th of October, which gives emphasis on sharing, praying and caring for the creation of God. The season ends on the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi, being the patron saint of ecology. During this season, we give thanks to all that God has made, repent for all the damage we have caused, and commit ourselves to action to protect the earth, our common home. From the very beginning, God's purpose for the earth is to be a healthy and livable world for all creatures. In the book of Genesis, humans like you and I have been called by God to be responsible in the care and use of our planet to till, to serve, to keep and to protect the earth and even treat creatures with due respect. In helping to instill and promote the care for the creation, our lecturer for the special moral subject has assigned us with a project. I was rather excited because I am a lover of nature and a strong believer that I too can play a role in saving the environment, the creation, in little ways. For who else can take care of our earth, our home? not us. When this small piece of tilted land in the backyard of St. Peter's College was given, it appears to be unproductive, sloppy, empty and deserted. It was a laborious work of clearing, not much of the weeds, but the stones underneath the ground in order to make way for the cultivation of an herbal garden. This herbal garden is also an inspiration from the rector, Father Nicholas Ng, who seemed to be knowledgeable on herbal plants. Yes, herbal plants are known to have medicinal values. Hold on there, I'm not a herbalist, a therapist or, a, or an Ayurvedic expert as you think, but just getting to know the health benefits of these herbs which God had intended for the good of mankind. Let me take you to the garden which I started one month ago. Come, follow me. Watch out for the steps. They are narrow and slippery. Welcome to my herbal garden. You can see, for instance, this plant called the elephant foot or Solomon seed or in Barsa we call it Tapa Sulaiman for the treatment of drop seed even cough and venereal diseases. And this can be used also as diuretics for the treatment of urination problem. Here, this is called chamber bitter or stone breaker for treating kidney stones and urinary stones. This one is called Shi Shangbai or spike moss for treating cough in relation to the heat in the lungs also sore throat and jaundice. Research also have proven that this can also help to treat cancer of the liver as well as cirrhosis of the liver. This one is Moringa or drumsticks. These leaves have seven times more vitamin C than oranges, 15 times more potassium than the bananas. It has high level of antioxidant to boost immune system in our body and good for treating fungal and bacterial infections. Now, this one is called Saba snake grass or Blalai Gaja for the treatment of dysentery and diabetes, gout, snake bites and skin rashes. This one is called mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> Are you familiar? Anyway, it has got analgesic properties to treat fever and inflammatory disorders. This one is aloe vera, as most of you may know. This plant helps to treat heartburns, reflux, and also good for skin care and air growth. We have also turmeric, lemongrass, pandan leaves, 
curry leaf, Visai Kuching, and I am also getting lean plant from a friend. Friends, from this herbal cultivation, I have learned five things. First, being made in the image and likeness of God, I am able to co-create with God and recognize my potential as a caretaker of God's creation. This hairy and hidden land has now transformed into a fruitful, productive and a living land of blessing. I realize the existence of this herbal garden brings the beauty and goodness to the surroundings and the people. I sense the presence of God in the nature through my engagement with this herbal garden which signifies my integral role and relationship with God and His creation. A few of the seminarians out of concern told me not to labor in the afternoon as it was hot but that is the only free time I have. But what matters is that the sweat and hard labor instantly reminded me of the farmers who all their lives been working hard just to bring food to our table. Oh, they cultivate and do the planting, but nothing can grow without the blessings of God. This taught me about gratitude. Not just the contribution of the farmers, but always be thankful for all the blessings of God in my life. God is good all the time. Third, there are many plants around me that I did not know of their hidden health benefits. Maybe it is because of my ignorance or lack of knowledge. But now I began to learn and appreciate the value of little things around me. Yes, these herbal plants are intended for the goodness and well-being of our community here and the people outside, just like God intended the same when He brought creation into existence. Fourth, if I cultivate this herbal garden with the motive of fulfilling the academic requirements of the moral subject, then I am defeating the purpose of embarking on this project. Just like God's creative work does not stop from the very beginning, but continues even until today, then this co-creating and caretaking of this herbal garden should not be a one-off initiative, but a continuous commitment to look after this treasure as a gift from God and also be mindful of my role as a steward of his creation. Last but not the least, Pope Francis in his encyclical Laudato Si, which was issued in May 2015, pointed out that the church has a mandate to remind everyone of their duty to care for the nature, protecting humankind from self-destruction, and lead all creation back to God. In this respect, you and I can make a difference by caring and protecting our creation. For instance, in our own little small ways, we can do recycling of rubbish waste, composting of food waste, use biodegradable products and plant a tree. Let us reduce, reuse and recycle instead of being the throwaway culture society. Before I end, I would like to invite you to join with me and praise God for this gift of creation by singing the song Laudato Si O Mi Signor.
to share your peace with others, bearing trials and sickness bravely, even sister death for the web. Laudato si, o oh mi signore, laudato si, o oh mi signore, laudato si, o oh mi signore, laudato si, o oh mi signore. Life is but a song of worship. This Laksa for Jiwa episode has served you with an appetizing flavor that brings a sense of appreciation and care for the creation of God. 